So I was moving things around and uh, I was trying to find a place for this thing. Um, I used to use it a lot, uh, but I don't anymore. It is a lead acid charger. Um, uh, I had some le sealed lead acid batteries that I got out of some used equipment and they were really good. They were, I forget the brand name now, but they're, but they're, they're very, very nice sealed lead acids. And uh, I used them for a lot of things um, and I needed a, a charger for it, so I built this. And I, I don't have those batteries anymore. I don't use this anymore. Most of my projects are lithium powered now and everything. So, um, so let's talk about this box. It's just 13.8 volts output. And um, I, I do have a monitor. It's not current regulated, but I have a monitor in there. So if it goes above two amps, this LED lights. Um, so I can tell if the batteries have been drained a lot. Um, and a yeah, power switch, and th that's about it, right? So, um, it, it uh, has a connector on the back and a funny little heat sink. The TO3 looks like a TO3 transistor in the back with a, with a heat sink on it. And so I um, was thinking about maybe repurposing the box or um, trying to remember exactly what was inside the box. And so I went to look and it, it came across an idea that I think you guys um, may not know about. Um, so let me show you that. All right, so inside this box is just the typical stuff, a switch, a fuse, transformer, bridge rectifier, filtering, and then a, a three-terminal three regulator. That, that uh, part on the back uh, is actually a TO3 three-terminal regulator. You can, you can find those things. They're, they're not all that common these days, but it's a three-amp um, three part, so it's like a 78 uh, something or other, and... Um, 78XX, right? There's a, a series of, uh, usually they start with LM78, uh, oops, I'm sorry, 78XX. So a 7805, 7812, um, and then there's a series of parts that are 79. Okay, so these are plus regulators and these are minus regulators. So an LM7905 would be a negative 5 volt regulator. So 78s and 79s. And um, so, uh, like I said, this one happens to be a three amp ver a three amp version, and so really, what I want is a LM seventy eight and maybe a seventy eight fourteen uh, at at three amps. Well, I don't know if they make this thing or not. So uh, what I had in uh, in my junk bin or available or whatever was a uh, a different part. So if you need a um, a general purpose regulator, there's something called an LM317, which is an adjustable uh, positive, and there's an LM, I think it's a 337, which is the adjustable negative. And um, so let's take a look at those. Let, let's uh, let's let's discuss those. So here is a uh, LM317, and the way that these work is they're you can think of them as a uh, adjustable with a, uh, a, a, a a feedback that needs to be 1.25. So whatever voltage you want to create you need to feed back 1.25 volts for it to regulate. So you have a, a divider chain here, and whatever that divider chain is, let's say you wanted 13.8 uh, volts here, then you uh, figure out what resistor this is to make this voltage 1.25, right? So you need to divide it by a factor of 10, right? So the uh, one of the problems with these regulators is that there is some current uh, that comes out of the regulator and that will mess with your regulation over here So you need to compensate for the current that's required and it's not a lot It's on the order of maybe 8 milliamps or something like that um, It's not a lot, but it, it, it does require you to think about the uh, choices over here so the data sheets say you need to have maybe five times more current here than you do here to kind of swamp it out. And um, so anyway, they, they recommend, so if you look at the data sheet of an LM317, they recommend a 240 ohm resistor. 
So that makes sure that the uh, current in, in, in here is swamping the current here. And so, yeah, 240 ohms. So that means that this resistor has to be quite small, maybe, you know, 24 ohms or something. So um, in order to get that divided by 10 and stuff like that. So anyway, you can use the LM317. I use them all the time. You can do all, all kinds of other things with them. They're great parts. Um, but I didn't have a 3 amp uh, LM317. Now, I did a, um, a video a while back where you can take a, a regular LM317 and put a pass transistor across it. You can put a, a PNP or an NPN uh, in different current configurations, and you can have a pass transistor that allows this to, to create more current. So I certainly could have done that in the, uh, in the part, but uh, what I had and what I wanted to use was I had an LM7805. And an LM7805 is a 5 volt regulator. So you say, well, well that's not going to do you any good. You, you need 13.8 volts. And so you can think of these uh, the same way that it doesn't matter that the 7805 wants this to be 5 volts. I mean, normally you hook it to ground, right? But it wants to see 5 volts across here. And so if you put a divider chain here, let's say a one-to-one -one divider chain, and then this would be 10 volts. There'd be 5 volts here, and there will also be 5 volts here. And so you can actually use these in the same way that you use 317s. And once again, you need to worry about this current, and you need to worry about how much currents are over here, and this formulas and calculations stuff you can do. Um, and so uh, if you're going to use these things, just go read the data sheet. The data sheet has all the information you need. It has uh, sample circuits and stuff, and it has all the formulas and things. Um, there is an easier way um, that I used in my circuit. So let me show you that. Okay, so that was, this was my circuit. And what I did was to put a Zener diode here. And that's all I did. And I put a a, a nine volt uh, a nine volt Zener diode, and so I got out uh, 14 volts. And with losses in the cabling and and connections and stuff, it ended up being about 13.8 anyway. So, but technically, uh, this would be a, a, a 7805, right? And so nine volts and five volts is 14 volts. And so that's the way I accomplished it. So I don't know if people have seen this trick before. Um, if you can find a Zener diode of the right value, then you just pop it in there and you don't have to worry about all those current calculations because the current actually helps bias the, uh, bias the Zener diode. So you're ready to go. No exterior components needed. Um, and so uh, that's, how, uh, that's how I built this box. And uh, it's just a trick I don't know many people have seen before.